Hi all, welcome to the Me Too Education webinar. Um, I'm very pleased um, to uh, invite uh, Nick Botfield here from the University of Southampton, uh, University of Bedfordshire, sorry, um, and he'll be sharing today um, his research on co-creative summative assessments. Um, Nick is an educational developer with a background in learning technologies and in particular has interests in the impact different virtual learning environments has on learning. Uh, his current research focuses on assessment and feedback um, and practices in higher education and intercultural awareness. Nick's a certified member of the Association for Learning Technologies, um, also a senior fellow in the Higher Education Academy. And as you will all soon learn, I'm um, someone who's passionate about making learning fun and interactive. Um, but before I hand over to Nick, um, as always, just wanted to encourage you to join the Me Too session. Um, Nick will be asking a few questions via the live polling today, um, but also be conducting some group discussion as part of the co-assessment um, co co objective of the webinar today. Um, so you will be using the, the Me Too um, discussion board. Uh, just follow the instructions on screen now to participate in the webinar via Me Too. Um, as always, just either download the app uh, via the um, Google Play Store or Apple Store, or alternatively just go to web.meetoo.com and enter the meeting ID 167310499. Um, so please do um, participate today um, and also don't forget to like others' comments. And yes, good morning Richard, thank you for participating already. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Nick, um, who's going to take us through today's session. So Nick, all yours. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for that uh, introduction, Amy, and I'm, I'm hoping you can all hear me okay. Um, yeah, as, as uh, Amy said, I'm an educational developer at the University of Bedfordshire. I've, I've actually worked at four universities in the southeast of England, and none of them at the University of South Amsterdam. <laughs> so it's <laughs> possi possibly <Apology>. hard. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to. What am I uh, going to be talking about today? Well, I'm going to be uh, talking about empowering students uh, and the opportunities and pitfalls of using technologies for co created summative assessments. This is now the third time that I've done this presentation, and I still can't think of a shorter title than that. So I will work on that and hopefully make it something a bit more. Uh, a bit more brief. Um, okay, so in terms of what we're going to uh, go through today, uh, I thought first of all, uh, in terms of changing this from a presentation into a webinar, uh, I wanted to gain an insight into how technology uh, can be used when we're co-creating uh, an assessment. Uh, so looking at n not only Me Too, um, but also other technologies that we can use as well. Um, and I'll discuss those in a little bit more detail. Uh, I'm going to uh, get you to consider the potential pitfalls and the opportunities uh, of using technology to co-create assessments. And then hopefully um, we're going to take part in a small co-creation activity uh, in using technology. This is the probably the part I'm most nervous about uh, and hopefully it will all kind of work uh, work all right. Um, the last couple of times I've tried it, it has worked all right. So hopefully uh, that will all be fine. Uh, but let's kick off with a, a quick poll. Um, so what I would like you to answer here is have you ever co-created an assessment with your students before? This will give me a kind of good idea of uh, who it is that I'm talking to and whether or not this is something you've experienced. So you've got three options, uh, yes summative, yes formative, or no neither and you haven't co-created an assessment with your students before. So just take uh, 30 seconds, answer that and then we'll come back. Okay, right, excellent. So we've got um, the, the vast majority who haven't, and I, I think that's uh, pretty similar to what I found elsewhere uh, whenever I've asked that question. Uh, a few that have used formative uh, assessments and co-created them with students, and then fewer who have done it with summative. Uh, as I say, that's that's pretty much as I expected. It's uh, it's not usual to co-create summative assessments. It tends to be sort of uh, university policy and things like that that can 
in some ways restrict what you can do, but there are ways around that as well, um, particularly if you sort of get to know your own regulations a little bit. Um, okay, so now I know who I'm talking to, uh, should we move on? And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about why I, I came to, to do this. Um, so first of all, I, I'm, I'm very pro involving students in the in the learning process um, and I, I wanted uh, an assessment where they were actively engaged in the actual creation of it. Um, I, I got that through uh, a little bit of uh, reading and I, I went to a couple of conferences where people were doing something similar. Um, I also teach on a blended learning course which I'll uh, speak about briefly in a minute and because of that I thought okay well if I'm going to go down this co-creation route of uh, uh, doing this with students and creating that assessment, I'm probably going to have to do it using uh, technology as well uh, because we've got students on the course that are, um, are distance learners almost. Um, so this all kind of led me to think, okay, right, let's have a look at the co-creation of summative assessments. Um, and let's think about how we might be able to do this on the course uh, in, that I teach in. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that course now and what led me uh, to then um, to then decide to do the co-creation of it. So it's a, it's a postgraduate certificate uh, in teaching in higher education. Uh, last year when I did this we had 35 students, um, most of them were taking a kind of blended route, uh, some of them were uh, distance and then some of them were um, local students. Um, my unit, uh, we, we call them units, my module, uh, if you like, uh, at the university is on assessment and feedback in higher education. So I had a kind of route in to talking to them and, get, and getting them uh, really sort of engaged with the assessment within the unit. And I, I also had a, a, another route in because there were some, as I said, that was the second module within the uh, course. Uh, and we had some issues with the first module. Um, so that's probably putting it a little bit lightly. We, we got a bit of a hammering in our module evaluation uh, questionnaires and particularly around assessment. So the particular issues we had were the clarity of the assessment brief and students understanding of, of how their assessment needed to be structured, what it actually was that they needed to do. Um, so what I thought, okay, well, I've, I've got this idea and the students haven't been particularly um, engaging with the assessment the way that we would like them to, which was just as much uh, our fault. Um, so what, what solution can I bring? So I thought, okay, let's try to get the students more involved in building the assessments and then let's use technology to extend it to the students who couldn't physically be um, in, the, in the classroom. Uh, so I've, I'm now going to talk you through a, the kind of blueprint of how I did it and you can see if this might be something um, that, uh, that you could do with your students. Um, the, the context might be slightly different, but I think it probably does uh, have application there uh, as well. So in terms of um, the blueprint, the students started the unit and the first thing that I did with them was to ask them to review uh, the previous assessment. So the assessment that they had fed back on and said that they would you know, really struggle to engage with and didn't know how to structure it, I got them to actually review that assessment and, and tell us as part of their kind of uh, reflection on it as an assessment, what could have been improved about it. After that, I then moved on uh, and the kind of the key thing in the, in the first, um, first session that we had together was the creation of their next assessment. Um, so what I did here was I split them into groups, um, got them to have a look at uh, our module information form, um, and I gave them the key aspects of the assessment that couldn't be changed because of kind of quality and policy and things like that. Um, so that was the learning outcomes of the uh, module, uh, the assessment weighting, so how, uh, how much it weighed and, uh, and uh, how large it had to be. Uh, and the hand in date. They couldn't change these things, but they could, apart from that, really um, change anything else that they wanted. So in their groups, they came up with uh, different assessments that they could try, and uh, then we used Me Too uh, to vote on it. Um, 
after that, I then took all of their ideas and I, I said, okay, well, which of these assessments do you like uh, like the best? Uh, and which ideas from the other assessments uh, did you also like? Uh, I took that and I, I kind of synthesized it all together and then I came up with their assessment, which I then put onto Google Docs. So the, the actual assessment brief itself was on Google Docs. I gave them permissions to comment on it, add any questions that they wanted. Uh, I didn't let them edit it because with kind of 35 odd people, I thought that would probably get a little bit confusing. But I allowed them to kind of put any comments that they wanted. And what I actually found was that they were answering each other's questions on it as well, which was really helpful. Obviously, I could kind of uh, get in there as well and, and make sure that they were being directed correctly. Um, but it was uh, really good to see them learning from each other. So once they'd done that, we had a webinar uh, just to finalize everything, uh, to go through it with um, the whole class, because the whole class could obviously make the webinar, uh, and just answer any finalized questions, uh, final questions that they had, uh, and then we could complete it, and, uh, and then they could start the assessment. Um, all, all of that uh, sounds like it's a kind of onerous task, but actually it, it, was, it was kind of fairly easy, and it was just the process that I would have gone through by myself, I was actually just going through with them. Um, so actually, it, it turned out that it was um, a lot more straightforward than I thought it would be. So what impact did that then have? Um, well, if you have a look at the slide that uh, Amy's just put up here, um, you can see that there's two statements, and this is, their, this is from their module evaluation form. Uh, the first statement is, the assessment arrangements on this unit are clear, and the second one is, I know what I need to do to pass this unit. The top answers here were the, was the feedback that we received from um, the first unit, and then the bottom answers, the one below, is the feedback that we received from the second unit, which was the unit that I did the co-creation with. So you can see that, well, first of all, no one is disagreeing with either statement in the, in the second one, so no one's disagreeing that the assessments uh, on the unit were clear, or disagreeing that they didn't know what, saying that they didn't know what to do to uh, to pass the unit, so that was great. Uh, as well as that, the average just went up, so we were averaging, I think, around 3.5 on the uh, on the first one, and then 4.5 out of 5 on the second. So it was great to see that it had such an in instant impact, uh, and the students uh, seemed to really enjoy it as well. And as well as that, because this was a um, uh, postgraduate certificate in teaching in higher education, there was also an element of what I was doing was then being modeled uh, to the students as well. So Amy, if you could just go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so these were two emails that I got from, from two of the students. Uh, I won't sort of read them word for word, but basically they're saying that they are now going to uh, take the idea of co-creating the assessment and do it with their students. So not only were they kind of satisfied within the uh, course that we were running, but they were also satisfied to such an extent that they thought it was a good thing for them to then uh, take forward and, and do with their students, which was just yeah really great to see. Um, I'm actually now in the process of getting feedback from those students, um, as in the students of my students, uh, to see what they did, uh, how they how they found it, and everything like that. So it's been a really nice kind of cyclical process, um, which uh, again has been yeah, great to see. Um, so in terms of at the moment, I'm making this all sound uh, very rosy, uh, but obviously there's there's some kind of clear pitfalls here um, that you need to be aware of. Um, so the first pitfall uh, to speak about is ground rules. When you're um, when you're talking about assessment with students, uh, what you can very easily find uh, is that it's a it's a hot topic and it's an emotionally charged topic, particularly when uh, we were talking about a, uh, an assessment that the students hadn't done very well on and hadn't engaged particularly well with uh, from the previous unit. So I set the ground rules right from the start, and I said, look, this, this isn't about the grade that you got, this is about the grade that you're going to get. Uh, and they seem to pick up on that, and they seem to respond to that um, quite positively. So that was really great to see. Uh, the second pitfall um, was 
uh, I felt I felt like I could be overburdening them slightly with technology. So we use uh, Blackboard as our virtual learning environment. So they were using Blackboard, but then they were also using Me Too in the classroom, uh, and, well, and outside of the classroom actually. Um, they were also using Google Docs, and then we were also using um, Adobe Connect for the webinar. So I, I had this fear that I was slightly overburdening them, and one of one or two students really did struggle. Um, so in terms of that burden, then that kind of transferred to me, and I was slightly overburdened because I was kind of creating uh, a couple of how-tos with the uh, yeah, how to do this, how to do that with the technology that we were using. Um, I've got to say with Me Too, that wasn't uh, a problem there. With Google Docs, it was uh, slightly more problematic, particularly uh, if they if they hadn't used it previously. Um, but it wasn't a massive issue, and we managed to get through it quite easily. So the, the third issue um, was that I was slightly fearful that they thought I was just being lazy and that I, I couldn't be bothered to somehow create their assessment, uh, so I was just kind of giving it to them as a task to do. Um, I, I've got to say, I didn't get any feedback that, that remotely suggested that, uh, but it was a fear of mine. Um, I think what probably or probably swayed it in my favor was the fact that they could see that actually there was a fair amount of work that was going into that assessment from my part as well as from their part. Um, so I don't think they kind of took it as, you know, I was taking some kind of easy ride because it was co-created. It wasn't they were creating it. Uh, so I was kind of um, with them every, every step of the way. Um, and then I guess the final pitfall was that I was slightly concerned that even though we were kind of being democratic about it and um, the we were using Me Too to vote and things like that, that there might be some of the shyer students who um, weren't kind of speaking out and weren't uh, forming the assessment that they would want to do because it was uh, because the, the slightly more dominant students uh, were leading the way slightly. Uh, so I had this kind of fear that that might be going on. Again, I, I didn't get any feedback. Um, that suggested that, and if anything, it kind of helped um, that they, the uh, slightly uh, shy students in the group were given the opportunity to discuss it with maybe the sort of more dominant and sometimes stronger uh, students in the group as well. So that, um, I think, really uh, really could, could have been a negative, but actually could have turned into a positive, which was great. Um, so. Since I've, got, I've gone through all that, it's probably best if we kind of have a look at how you might do it. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to have a quick poll to decide which module you would like to uh, co-create. Uh, so we've got two uh, possible options here. Uh, these are two actual modules um, from two uh, universities. I can't remember which one, actually. Surf Practice, I think, was uh, a university in Cornwall. Um, and I think Harry Potter in the Age of Illusion was a module uh, at Durham. Um, so choose which one you would like to co-create the assessment for. All right, okay. I, I thought that might be the case. Uh, you can always rely on the uh, uh, on the teaching community to enjoy a, a bit of Harry Potter. So, okay, Amy, if we could get the Harry Potter in the Age of Illusion um, uh, module about, uh, module form up, and I'll just talk you I'll just talk you through it now. So, this is the module that we're going to co-create an assessment for. Uh, so, it's a, a 15 credit module. It's at level five, so it's second year, um, and we it's got a few aims. The aim is to place the phenomenon that is Harry Potter in its social, cultural, and educational context and understand some of the reasons for its popularity. Uh, it's to consider the relevance of Harry Potter to the education system in the 21st century, and is to understand the first uh, 21st century education in light of the Harry Potter system. Uh, series and other educational fiction uh, that it casts a light on. So you can see the unit learning outcomes there. Uh, we want to see connections between fiction and education policy, critically analyze educational uh, policy concepts and theories, provide a well-argued conclusion 
relating to significant education issues and utilize a range of relevant primary and secondary sources. Um, we've already got one assessment. One ass the first assessment is a two hour exam uh, weighted at 50%. So we've got to find another 50% weighted assessment. So what I would now like you to do bearing that in mind is use your um, use me to uh, and the I'm hoping that Amy's going to go back onto the PowerPoint yep that's it brilliant uh, use the, uh, the the chat box in me too uh, to send a message and we're going to create the assessment for that Harry Potter module uh, so you can just put any ideas uh, that you that come to your mind down as to if you were setting that module what what would you like that assessment to be uh, and please go as uh, go as mad as you like with this um, because sometimes the kind of crazy the crazier the idea the better the assessment uh, ends up being so have a have a think about it and then uh, please feel free to, to send in a message uh, and we can co-create an assessment together Okay, uh, Amy, is it all right to go back to the module information sheet so we can we can keep that up? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah, good point, Catherine. We we did go through that pretty quickly, so uh, just so you can see that again, we might have to move around a little bit for a second. Okay, so we've got uh, students to make a documentary type video exploring the concepts involved. Uh, we've got a couple of kind of uh, posters, PowerPoints, presentations, these kind of ideas, um, particularly uh, looking at, I think, sorry, just going down here. Um, yeah, particularly uh, using images as well. Uh, we've got a mind map. I really like these because they're they're all very um, image image focused, be it videos or be it uh, using the presentation uh, using a presentation software like PowerPoint or Prezi. Um, if there's any that you like here, uh, I might yeah, mind map might be uh, nice to showing uh, for showing connections. If there's any that you particularly like here, uh, just click the uh, thumbs up and then we'll see which one uh, comes up. If someone else has put an idea in that you think could kind of apply to what it is that, that you're doing as well, uh, then even better. Uh, Adam Warren uh, include news clips from Boxer Broadcasts uh, as well as uh, clips and voiceover uh, and images. Okay, so again, another one that's really image focused uh, there. Oh, and hello to Trevor Kessel in uh, in Southampton. I'm, I'm I apologise that I'm not with you today. Okay. So, I mean, what, I, what I'm kind of seeing here is that you've, uh, you've really grasped the idea that there's a lot of kind of key concepts, and this is really about drawing them together. Um, so even without me sort of having to prompt you to get there, sort of pretending that you're the students in this, uh, in this scenario, um, you, you've, you've already kind of got there yourselves, and, and you've pulled together what you think would be the uh, best idea. Um, what I'm seeing is, uh, I think Leanne's uh, uh, has come up on top. So students to make a documentary type video exploring the concepts involved, but also that there's a, a mind map uh, idea here as well. So what this could be is that uh, the students could create uh, a video looking at these concepts, like a short video, uh, and, and with it, um, create a, a, the, the mind map. So create a mind map, which actually is the almost the plan for the video uh, uh, type documentary that they're going to be submitting. So what I would now do at this point is I would take 
these ideas. Uh, I would write them up into an assignment brief, um, which I could then put onto Google Docs. Uh, students could then uh, comment on, ask any questions, and we could really form these kind of really uh, nice ideas uh, into a full assessment, which they could then um, which they could then do themselves. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope that was a, a nice, uh, very quick way of co-creating uh, an assessment. Um, and I think, have we got time for some questions? Oh, oh, there's one more question. Sorry, yeah, we've got one more question. Uh, after doing this, um, would you now consider co-creating assessments with your students? So you've just got a quick yes or no here. It doesn't matter if, if the answer is no, because um, we, we can always explore any kind of reasons why that might be uh, in the sort of five, ten minutes we've got left. All right, okay, well, I'm, I'm really glad about that. Um, so we've got, yeah, a, a, a real majority uh, saying yes. Um, right, so I think now uh, we can open it up to any questions uh, that, that you'd like to ask. Thanks very much for that, Nick. It was uh, no problem. Really, really interesting. Really enjoyed it. So, it's, it's a great way of using technology and co-creating. Um, so we do. We have a couple of questions in here. Um, so I'm just going to take a look through. Um, so how do you use Me Too in co-creation, um, and can it be used for large groups? Okay. Right. So. Uh, in terms of using Me Too for co-creation, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you, you, you've seen that there, how it can be used. I, I do think that as well as using Me Too, uh, there's other technologies that you can use um, to uh, pull the ideas together to kind of create an assessment brief, and that's why I chose to use uh, Google Docs. Uh, but in terms of getting those initial ideas down, and yeah, as you can see, kind of voting them up, um, I think it can be really useful. What was, what was the second question there, sorry? It was kind of two-part, uh, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, can it be used for large groups, or how, how well do you think it would be used within large groups? Okay. Yeah. That's. It's a really good question. I mean, I, like I said, the the group size that I'm doing with this is is fairly small. You know, you're talking about sort of 35 on a course. I would not completely shy away from doing it with large groups, but really consider uh, the impact that you could have. Um, and you might kind of consider things like those issues that I went through before, uh, the ground rules, trying to make that as, as clear as is possible when you're doing it with large groups. Uh, and also maybe um, when you're sort of opening it up to uh, comment. Uh, when I was doing it, I was very uh, confident in the students that I, I had uh, who were going to kind of deal with it maturely and everything like that. Um, using me too. Uh, I think I would be, particularly if you've got a large group, I think I would be very tempted to use the moderation tool. Uh, so you're ensuring that uh, the, the um, suggestions that you're getting through are uh, uh, what, what, it is the, what, what it is that you require and they're not kind of superfluous or just someone uh, having a bit of a laugh or anything like that. Um. Thanks for that. Uh, we've got quite a few more questions come in, so um, we'll try we'll try and answer a couple of them. Um, what was your biggest restriction on assessment rules that you had to keep to due to uni regs? Okay, right. So th this this was um, my way around uh, a, a real issue that we have, which is basically that we have to put on our um, our regulations say that we have to put on our uh, module form prior to the students starting, what type of assessment it is that they're going to be doing. Uh, that was the biggest uh, hurdle. And luckily, I found an assessment type in our regulations called artifact. And I thought that is significantly broad, that it could pretty much be anything. So I just put artifact and hope that when I uh, put it through our uh, approval process, someone wouldn't kind of pick up on it and say, actually, what is that? Uh, and so, yeah, that was the biggest issue, and that, that was my way around it. And I was kind of lucky that they didn't, but, yeah. Super. So, um, uh, one from Catherine Stapleford. Um, are other tutors getting on board, um, and how do external examiners view it? Okay. Uh, so, um, in terms of other tutors getting on board, as I, as I showed you there, the students that we teach are uh, in 
uh, teaching positions at the university. So they're getting on board. As well as that, um, I have, because I've done uh, this presentation at a couple of conferences, I've uh, had communications from people at other universities who have uh, gone down this route, just kind of asking you know, uh, questions like the one that you just uh, asked about, sort of getting around policy and things like that. Um, and in terms of external examiners viewing it, uh, we've got a, a really great external examiner who was completely pro it when I uh, sort of floated the idea um, uh, with her. Uh, and the only thing that I, I had to do was put off sending her the assessment brief, but I just emailed her and said, like, this is what we're doing. And she just said, that's a great idea and, and crack on with it. So, so we did. So it wasn't a problem there. Um. We, we have um, run past the half hour mark, but uh, so if people do need to leave, then um, obviously please do. Um, but if it's okay, we've just got a couple more questions. We, we might as well um, crack on through them. Um, so one from uh, Sarah Green. The student ideas could be equally vague as the ones we came up with. How does that actually move you forward? Um, so... In, in terms of, uh, you, you sort of have to take uh, what we did just then as a, as a real microcosm of what actually happens when we, uh, when we do this. Um, because, first of all, when I, when I set the uh, task in class, I give them around sort of 25, 30 minutes to knock ideas around uh, amongst themselves. So you tend to be able to get a slight more uh, richness uh, of, um, of ideas there. Um, and in terms of moving that forward, uh, because I'm, I'm getting them to work on it in groups, uh, and then I'm, I'm taking their ideas and, and getting them to sort of vote on it, but also state what other ideas from other assessments that they like, the, the culmination of all of that then tends to lead to a really rich assessment that everyone is, is, is actually positive about and feels like they've... Um, They've actually they've actually um, uh, involved themselves with, which is great. Um, I think we'll just take uh, one final question um, from Adam Warren from the University of Southampton. Um, All right, hello, Adam. <laughs> uh, could students be given a couple of assessment choices, e.g., an essay for those who don't have the skills or confidence to create a video? Yeah, we we do try to be as as flexible as we can and. And doing it this way does allow that. Um, we we have to be slightly careful there that when when we are offering uh, different choices of assessment, that they can be uh, marked and fed back on uh, equally uh, comparatively to any other type of assessment. Um, so I haven't actually. I, I mean, I've never done it so that they they have different uh, assessment choices in that way. Um, but I, I can't see there being too much of a barrier uh, to it as long as there's consistency amongst the, the marking of both. And what I would suggest there is if you've got a strong enough rubric or grading criteria um, that allows that kind of flexibility, uh, then, then you should be okay. Super. Thanks very, very much, Nick. I think we're going to um, draw it to a close there. Um, and uh, I think, uh, hopefully... Uh, before we leave, um, we do just have a couple of questions for you. So I, I hope that you all enjoyed today's webinar, and yeah, thank you very much again, Nick. For, all right, for thank you very much. Today's session. Um, and if people don't mind, just a couple of quick questions. Um, please do be totally honest with us. Um, we, we really want to improve um, our webinars. Um, and if you do have any ideas, either please do email me, so education at me um, or any requests. Um, also post them through the message board. Um, contact me directly, however you like. Um, thanks very much. And I think I've just got one more question for you. Um, so as normal, I don't think we'll be displaying those results. Um, so where did you hear about today's webinar? Uh, so it wasn't an email directly from me too. Uh, what did someone from me, or did it get shared with you, the email, social media, ALT, newsletter, um, or a colleague recommendation? That's lovely, thank you. 
right? Main, over 50% customers. Okay, and um, one last uh, sort of thing to ask you, if you haven't already shared a Trustpilot view and you are a user of Me Too, then, then please do visit our Trustpilot um, page and drop us a review. Um, and if you haven't used our YouTube um, channel, then please do visit there. Lots of um, tutorials there and this webinar will be posted there, um, hopefully later today, if not tomorrow. Um, if you wanted to rewatch it or share it with anyone, please do. And yeah, thank you very much again from myself and Nick and have a very good day.